There you are, welcome back. I am here with a tool changer, but more importantly, I'm here with my friend, Nick. Hey, Nick. Hi. Nick has shape lamp, and we're gonna talk about what that means and what this tool changer has to do with it. But first, Nick, what is shape lamp? Like, what does it do? So basically, shape lamp started off as a small company wanting to democratize and decentralize the lighting design process. Um, what do I mean by this? So you walk into a room, oh, and uh, you want to put a lamp in your room, but whatever is available in a store is either too small or too big. Well, we allow people to change their own design on our own website. Um, you just input some parameters and you output uh, a lamp based on this, uh, these inputs, you know. It's quite, it's quite cool. Um, uh, and we've been doing this for the past few years now. Well, I got to see it. You showed me on your phone and you guys, this is really cool. The design software online essentially allows you to specify a curve Yes. And then you told me using Rhino and a Grasshopper script, yes. it takes that curve and extrapolates that design exactly. that you just showed us. And then what's next in that process? Like you ship this out as a product, So correct? what happens is once we get an order in, the, the model is nested and we cut it using a laser. It's made out of wood, simple birch wood. Um, we finish it manually. It's a very high-end process with nice finishes with wax and all this stuff. Then we flat pack it, we call it the eco pack, and we ship it out to customers. There's a very easy instruction leaflet and people just assemble the lamp and you have a beautiful customized lamp. That's really cool. Well, plus this is online, so anybody yes. can try it, right? Anyone with an internet connection can try it out on shapelamp.com. Oh, perfect. We'll put a link down in the description as well. But now, okay, we've established what shape lamp is and this, you call it the shape lamp one, correct? Yeah. Now though, you have, well, you have this. We're actually leaning on it. This is an E3D tool changer. But unlike most or all of the tool changers I've seen before, it's not a four-headed 3D printer, is it? It is not. Take me through this. What have you done? So what we want to do is we want to stick to the shape lamp platform where people can customize their own designs. Um, uh, and we now want to 3D print this. But we also want to integrate some automation and conductive filaments inside, so we can... Go Con wait, 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 conductive filament? Yeah. You're actually utilizing conductive filament in the process. We are. We tested a lot of different filaments and a lot of different iterations, and we ended up using the simplest and the best we found, at least for our tests. It was protopasta. Oh, protopasta. Uh, They're yeah. my friends. It's good stuff. So what this does, basically, we have four tools. We have a pick and place head, we have two print heads, and a pushing tool. Oh, okay, so no extrusion, no milling, no nothing. This is a tool specifically for pushing. Yeah, it's, uh, it's simply there just because the pick and place tool is not strong enough to push an LED into the part. But then we use the pushing tool to press fit it and it just, there's, like it connects, you know? I, I know people that have a lot of different 3D printers and they utilize them for automation uh, with, with certain machines. We have multicolor that can, you know, it can automate. You, you paint it beforehand and the multicolor machine is able to put together four, eight or 16 colored models. So your automation is more around being able to produce a product, but at consistency. Exactly. Now with a tool changer, creating a product is something that obviously people can do. Um, and everyone out there probably has seen something similar to like this, but you've got new heads, stuff that isn't 3D printing, stuff that does specific things to make the product. And so I was hoping you might take me through each of the heads and sure. we can find out just kind of what your thinking was. So what is that one? So this is a pick and place tool head. This is vacuum to pick up small pieces, in this case LEDs, and place them into the print while it's printing. While it's printing, yeah. that's the cool part with automation. I've done videos where I've input magnets into prints while it's printing and you know, you bury the magnet. It's a similar concept. It's very similar, but this is doing it a lot cooler than the way I did it because I just hit pause. No, we're actually integrating it into the code, into the G code. Um, so it's a fully automated process from start to finish. All you need to do is just press print and it, it goes. Oh look, that's, that's the LEDs for the pick and place right there. Yeah, so this is our LED feeding system. It is still a prototype, but it does work. Um, what it does is, like you just said, putting magnets in while you're printing. But in this case, the pick and place comes out, picks up an LED and puts it in the print. It places it, it doesn't push it in. Then we use the pushing tool to push the LED in place. Oh, okay, and that's why, so the vacuum pump is there because this head comes over and uses, produces yeah. a vacuum to hold onto the LED. And, and then it moves it over and it places it, like pick and place, it's not pick and push. It's pick and place. <laughs> and then, the pusher head, which is over there, then comes over and pushes the LED into place. Yes. We do that for the simple reason that the pick and place is 
It's quite strong, but it's not strong enough to push the LED in. Otherwise, it would damage itself and the rest of the component. Another cool thing is that the pick and place can also turn. So we have this contraption here, so we can power the stepper motor and turn the pick and place head oh. while it's moving it. So we can place, the LEDs are all in the same orientation. And then depending on what we are printing, you can turn the LED to match the, the notch, I guess. That makes so much sense. Well, when I look at industrial pick and place machines, they will take things and put them in order and they know, they know, they know place and they know orientation. Exactly. And so you know exactly that those are all in the same orientation and it knows the G code that's making the product. And so it's simple for it to go over and put it in place. Exactly. But then also the pusher head is able to come over and push it into place knowing that the pick and place put it in place properly. Now, the other two heads that are in use are both 3D printing heads, right? Yeah, simple hammer tool heads. One of the heads is obviously going to be just the material for the base of the product. Exactly. But the other head is doing conductive filament. It does, protopasta conductive filament. Now, how did you go about figuring out utilizing conductive filament? Because if, now, I, I've used some conductive filament, and if I remember right, the resistance really increases across length. Is that right? It does, yeah. So what we did is we bought some different conductive filaments on the market and we tested them. We did some different tests, for example, tests in the Zx and in the X and Y axis to see how the resistance varies based on, uh, on distance and orientation, and all that kind of stuff, and oh. even through layers. And we ended up with protopasta being the best one. So, uh, so based on this, we decided that, okay, so we can print a base using normal PLA or any material, to be honest, and uh, then we fill in with conductive material. By doing that, we can remove limitations from what people think that is a light. We don't know where light is coming from like this, because once you put a diffuser on and once you have the print ready, then you don't see where the individual sources of light are, because they're covered, they're, they're printed and they're there and they're enclosed forever. With the help of 3D printing, we can do that. That's great. No, and well, being able to utilize conductive filament essentially lets you create the electrical pathways in process, like in print. And so you are getting to create the full product further. So you don't have to, you're not printing wire guides and routes and feeding wire through We the tried end. to do that. We were looking into it. We spoke with a university in the US and they managed to do something similar, but the costs were so high that we just said, okay, let's do this instead. That makes sense. Well, I actually see some things on the bench. These are the test parts, right? So, yeah, so this is a test part which we carried, which we Can printed. I see it? Yeah. Um, that is to find out the resistance and how the conductive filament prints in different orientations and what we base our decisions on, basically. Oh, I see. There's the conductive yeah, filament. Yeah, it, it, it runs even like in these small towers. There's different lengths and different heights, so. Oh, and you've got numbers here. Is that, is that the ohms? No, th those are different heights. Of but that's really cool. You're able to like put a probe into each of these little exactly. spots and you have known heights and then you can judge what the, the resistance across yeah. the heights. And, and then put it in an Excel sheet and just play around with the numbers and see what happens, basically. Well, as an engineer, you like numbers, right? Yeah, I do. Is there something that actually has some of the, a, so, the, 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 the LEDs? What we started with is what I call the arc reactor. This is uh, a print with normal PLA as a base, and then we have the black part, which is the conductive track. Can I see that? Yeah. yeah. I see. So the normal PLA, the just the everyday yeah. standard PLA Gen that people PLA. use. Okay is the white material and the black, all of the black material yes, is the conductive, is conductive filament. Yeah. So we decided to go for this shape because, um, so as we said, resistance varies over length and over different distances and shapes. Mm -hmm. A circular pattern makes all the individual LEDs uniform. So um, the resistance from the center to the LED is the same. Oh, it's this, ah, so when we, So when we power the LEDs, the resistance is the same to each LED. So we have uniformity between LEDs. Once we printed this, then we need to decide, listen, how are we going to cover the LEDs? We ran a number of tests on different materials to, to discover. Um, this is for diffusion. This is for diffusion, to see how light diffusion works to different materials. And like, oh, this is great. Oh, this is perfect. Now, part of, part of what makes this amazing is you're utilizing additive manufacturing to make a product, but in the process of using additive manufacturing, you're also using AM to test whether or not exactly. the different pieces of the products can be done with a 3D printer or a tool chain. Yeah, so case. what we did, it's like, like an iterative <laughs> process. So we went to different phases of the product we want to do. 
want to have a final product. So we said, okay, let's break down the product into different parts. And uh, we tested each different part to see how we're going to produce it and what the best way to achieve that part is. That makes so sense. That is, th this is, this took quite a long time. I would, I would imagine. We've been here in Malta working with Stargate Studios Malta and you know, having to light different things. And it, it's crazy to see just how many layers of diffusion you can do in a, in a professional setup. And so I, I can imagine taking a large amount of time for that is essential it, it for creating a layer. a lot of time. I, I think like a month and a half or something like that. We have different jigs for these things. Like um, uh, we printed a matrix of LEDs to see how different patterns of LEDs like, affect the um, uh, the, the output. So it's, it was quite time intensive, but it worked out quite well and we were happy with the results. I have some experience in electronics and LEDs and wiring, and I know either, what, 3.3 or 5 volts, I, I know I've worked Something with, with like LEDs. Yeah. Um, if you have conductive filament, then are you having to boost the voltage fed into the system? Yes, yeah, so that's one issue we're, which we're having. So, since we are using quite some resistive material, we need to boost the voltage. Um, uh, at around 40 volts, we have like half... Yeah. 40 DC volts. <laughs> yes. Um, the, <laughs> the light output is almost at half intensity, something like that. It's amazing to me that, that we're, you're utilizing a conductive filament within this product, and it is working, but you're able to boost voltage yeah. by almost eight or nine times to get half the performance of an LED. And we're still within really good limits of the LED's functionality. <laughs> we also tested heat, heat output from the oh, LED. I guess, yeah, well, with more resistance, you're yeah, gonna have there, more heat. there's more heat. And we tested that, and we're within limits of the materials as well, so it's really cool, because it doesn't heat up at all, like, it, it just stays in place. So what we, what we did print as a working prototype is, is Ooh. this. May I? So, yeah. So this is, a, this is a prototype right here. Yeah, that is the sort of final working prototype, let's say that. Okay. We have the internal ring with LEDs. The range, electrical engineers will not be happy to see this, but it works. <laughs> uh, you know what, if it works, just um, call it good. So each LED, it's an RGB LED. So red, green, blue, and there's a common uh, negative side to it. Okay. Um, we power them individually. We can power like just red, just blue, or just green, or together we can make white. Ah, okay, so it's not RGB in that it's doing, you, you're doing color changing, it's just you, you are powering the R, the G, or the B, yes. or all. Or all of okay. them, to make white, if the end result that you want is white. I see a lot of wires here. Now, we're talking about automation with this tool changer and specific tools, but I do see a lot of wires, so it looks like it's not fully automated yet. Yeah, so the wiring is just the prototype part. We will be incorporating a PCB, like a standard copper PCB, to power the LEDs, but the LEDs themselves will be placed into a 3D printed conductive area like this. So that will be the, the, oh. the, that will be the 3D printed part. I see. The electronics, they, they will be on a PCB which will be housed inside this base here. So that is the idea. I mean, things change, so it depends, yes, on, it depends a lot on what we can do with the materials which we have and with the machine. I like that though. You're utilizing this really cool machine and specific, uh, specific heads within the tool changer to do the automation, but the automation is still in creating prototypes and exactly. you, you still have the ability to refine the process, but at the same time, utilize the tool changer to make those custom and dis, uh, bespoke elements that, that really lend itself to what Shape Lamp is trying to do with the customization exactly. and, and the uniqueness of it. So what sort of time frame, or do you have a time frame yet for this Shape Lamp 2 and what you're trying to do? It is still um, in the fine tuning process, so there's a lot of code involved in this. There always is. Um, I'm a mechanical engineer, so I don't really get myself into code, but um, I am learning. It's a very okay. nice learning curve and I'm enjoying it. Let's say that we're looking at having something ready in a few months, like two to three months. Oh, okay. Is there a place where people can go to find out more about the project and, and the cycle that you're going through and, and have estimated dates along the way? So at the moment, we don't publish anything yet. We do have our current website, which is shapelamp.com, where people can order lamps from, mm -hmm. um, like I just showed you. Um, but we are looking for collaborators like around the globe to, first of all, help out with this, but also to take any ideas and feedback from people 
that we can work on using this machine. You know, I noticed the lamp here, the, the lamp shade is actually 3D printed as well. Yeah. So people will be able to customize the diffuser as well. Um, that is our main goal, to let people change how the light comes out from their lamp. Um, the internals will be obviously ours, but then people can change the texture, the, I don't know, if it's flatter, rounder, bigger, you know, and that. Oh, all of it? Yeah, all of it. That's great. Well, and then also, because you're utilizing additive, you can customize button placement yes, as well. Yes, exactly. So we, we can use the conductive filament to maybe put buttons in the bottom or on the side or in some weird places that you cannot think of because it, it's all up to the user. Oh yeah, you could, you could actually put some conductive filament in the diffuser so that someone touched it. When yes. you put the diffuser on, it would... For example. Uh, or you could, change the, um, you could change the way the lamp behaves with conductive filament and that depending on the position of the diffuser, exactly. you could do stuff like, all of this is possible we, with We're also design. looking into like Bluetooth connectivity and Wi-Fi connectivity, so there's so many possibilities with this and we're, we're really happy that we, we got this opportunity um, uh, to work on this. Um, uh, it's partly thanks to the Malta Council for Science and, Te and Technology. The MCS... MCST. Yeah. MCST. MCST, okay. It's, it's quite a mouthful. <laughs> it is a bit of a mouthful, but the Malta Council for Science and Technology yeah. kind of helped you out along yeah, the way. Yeah, so it's a project together with them. That's fantastic. I'm kind of really wanting to see this move. Can we make it go? Yeah, sure, of course. Um, let me just get the laptop and we'll, uh, we'll go on. Yes. Now we've homed the tool changer. What's the next move we get to see? So I want to show you the pick and place in action. We're going to pick up an LED, turn it around, and then place it back down. Really? Okay, I can't wait to see this. So let's pick up the pick and place. the speed at which this moves. This is so good. Okay, you've got the pick in place. Yeah, so now we're going to go over the feeder, bring the table up, the bed up, and uh, pick an LED, turn it around, and then put it back down. We're going in position. I see we're in the correct position here. We're moving down to it, or moving the bed up as you wish. The vacuum pump is on. Vacuum pump is on, I can hear it. Now we move back up. Success! I love your enthusiasm. Now that the LED is on the pick and place tool, you can spin it. You can spin it, yes. There we go, and it spins. Oh, that spins well, that's really fast. And now we go back down. Okay. You can turn off the pump. I'll let you know when I hear it. There we go. Oh, okay, the vacuum pump is off. So we shouldn't have any vacuum. The pick and place should not be. There is still some it. residual vacuum in the tubing. Oh, there is. So we have to wait a bit, roughly 10 to 15 seconds, and oh, then we can good. lift up the, the tool again. And we can move back up. There we go. Slowly. Oh, look at that. Just tiny little suck. It's just a tiny little stuck right yeah, there, and then just it drops off. Exactly. Uh, in fact, the, the feeder is in such a way that if we move off, it unsticks, sort mm -hmm. of. But there you go. That's really cool. This is great because we were able to discuss the shape lamp one, the wooden lamp, and we talked about the two and how the tool changer is automating the process of creating that product. And I know this is still in a prototype phase, but we did successfully see a pick and place, pick, spin, and place. And place which is fantastic. Well, at this point, look to the camera and let the audience know kind of where they can find out more about you. So we are basically on all the socials, but if you'd like to know more, please message us on info at shapelamp.com. And I hear you're looking for collaborators, is that right? Yeah, we are. So do message us if you are interested in any of our products, please. I'll put links in the description for you to click. Well, at this point, I typically offer my audience a high five. Would you join me? 100% yes. Oh, it's good to hear. If you made this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Fight for a cause you believe in. Tool change all the things. And as always, high five. Nailed it.